Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar titled Three Ways Extended Reality Will Distra uh, Drastically Reconstruct Metal Forming Practices, presented by Simpac America and hosted by Metal Forming Magazine and the Precision Metal Forming Association. My name is Brad Coogan. I'm the Editorial Director of Metal Forming at PMA, and I'm pleased to serve as today's moderator. Before we get started, just a few notes about the GoToMeeting session today. Uh, it is being recorded for archiving, uh, and the recorded event will be posted to our website within the next couple of days. Uh, we'll let you know by email when the webinar is uh, available for viewing online. Also, all participants in the meeting are in listen-only mode. Uh, that means that the speaker and other listeners will not be able to hear any audio from your sites during the program. However, you do have the ability to communicate with us throughout the program by submitting your questions and comments using the question box, which is located on that right-hand control panel on your GoToMeeting screen. Simply type your question to an organizer as selected from the drop-down menu. Then you'll use that same question panel to ask questions of our speakers at the end of the presentation. So we'll go ahead and begin today's webinar, which is intended to address the following three questions. What is XR and why should metal formers care about this emerging trend? How will the low latency experience work in a production environment? And what impact will XR create for key players within the metal forming industry? Today's speakers are Stefan Robertson, General Manager and Vice President of Sales and Operations at Press Manufacturer Simpac America, and Kimberly Hankey, who is the founder and CEO of Elm Park Labs, which is a woman-owned software company. So without further ado, please welcome Stefan and Kim. Well, first of all, thank you very much, Brad. Um, so obviously, first of all, good afternoon. And before we start, I think it's only appropriate uh, that uh, both Kim and I introduce ourselves. Um, as some of you may already know, my name is Stefan Robertson, and I'm the GM and VP of Sales and Operations here at Simpac America. As most of you are aware, Simpac America is the North American subsidiary of South Korea's leading press manufacturer, Simpac Incorporated. Our product portfolio is comp comprised of mechanical, servo, and hydraulic presses, along with tandem, nine, tandem lines and automation solutions. Most of our customers originate from the various branches of metal forming industries, such as automotive manufacturers and tier suppliers, home appliance and household goods, the furniture and electronics industry, and military and aerospace. Before Kim introduces herself, we'd both like to thank Metal Forming Magazine especially Brad and Marlene for their continued support of Simpac. Now, Kim and I are currently on two separate locations for this webinar, so you're gonna hear the word over every now and then, uh, now and again. This is because we're using the, uh, the term as a signal to each other that we are done with our specific section, so to speak. With that said, I'd like to introduce Kimberly Hankey, founder and CEO of Elm Park Labs, over. Thank you, Stefan. Hello, everyone. My name is Kim Hankey, and I'm the founder and CEO of Elm Park Labs. It's great to be here. I'm looking forward to sharing information and knowledge with you today. Let me provide a little background on myself, myself and Elm Park Labs. I'm approaching four decades of leadership ex experience serving the automotive, aerospace, and defense and commercial industries with design, development, engineering, manufacturing, operations, strategic planning, and technology innovation. Time really does fly by. As I look back to when I started as a designer, computers were rare and so were women. I would look around a design room of 200 people and only five were women at that time. The industry really has evolved. Early in my career, I spent several years manually designing components of vehicle interiors and exteriors. As computers evolved to replace paper and pencil in the 80s, and my extensive knowledge in design, I started a CAD training school that was offered in the evenings as I continued to work full time. These courses have been recognized through partnerships with Baker College, Macomb Community College, Central Michigan, and Lawrence Technological University. The school evolved to a design and engineering company with three locations in Detroit, Fort Worth, and El Paso. 
The company established relationship with many businesses such as Eaton, PPG, Bell Helicopter, Raytheon, Lockheed, McDonnell Douglas, Wolverine Bronze, Delphi, Textron, North American Lighting, Autolead, Bosch, and TG North America, to name a few. During this time, I also served as the vice president and treasurer of the Detroit Chamber for the International Women's Automotive Association, and in addition was the national chairperson. Hankey Training and Design was acquired by Mexican Industries in 2000. I retained the position of vice president with responsibilities that included design, engineering, training, cost estimating, manufacturing, plan operations, prototype development, and product and profitability analysis. Following Mexican Industries, I joined the Department of Defense Ground Vehicle Systems Center. Some of you may realize or uh, recognize as TARDAC here in Detroit, as an Army civilian. As one of the few women serving and holding the position as Associate Director with responsibilities within the prototype integration facility. I left the DOD after 12 years of service and decided to create a woman-owned Michigan-based computer software company that empowers clients to reduce costs and enhance collaboration through the use of extended reality tools. EPL was founded from here. That's just a little bit about me so that you can get a better understanding of my background and expertise within the realm of XR. It should also provide an understanding as to how Elm Park Labs plays an integral part. EPL specializes in immersive XR applications designed for rapid training, simulation, and evaluation. Our platform is modular, scalable, and detailed focus. It allows administrators to host training modules, set learning paths where tasks can be measured, assessed, and certified. Such modernized applications can be networked across virtual, augmented, and mixed reality to include desktop platforms. EPL also offers an interactive 3D pocket system that complements these applications. EPL has a unique team composed of high-end visual graphics professionals with back-end software developers to deliver unique solutions for our stakeholders that apply new technologies to different problems in innovative ways. EPL is proud to be supporting SIMPAC here today and discuss the untethered user-friendly XR solutions that we created together to reshape the metal forming industry. Over. Thank you very much, Kim. And now moving forward, we will walk everyone through the three ways that XR technology will drastically reconstruct <laughs> metal forming practices in the area of sales and marketing buy-offs and installations, services, operational support, and our client's favorite discussion point, on-time production at scale. Over. So what is XR? XR, or extended reality, revolutionizes the way that humans learn, work, and interact. It is a collection of new ways or realities to interface with data, your data. These realities vary from partial sensory augmentation, AR and MR, to total virtual immersion, VR, as well as traditional methods, including mobile and personal computers. In the simplest of terms, XR is one platform with many applications. For those that are confused with the XR ecosystem, there can be, they can be described as such. VR, or virtual reality, creates a fully immersive virtual environment through the use of a head-mounted display and hand controls. MR, or mixed reality, creates hands-free wearable augmented experience that heightens the sense of immersion and productivity. AR, or augmented reality, uses a mobile device's camera to place 3D objects in the surrounding environment. There is also interactive 3D that allows users to view and interact with 3D objects on screen using a mobile device or tablet. Next slide, please. 
Why should metal formers care about it? The XR ecosystem is paramount to bringing a simulated and enhanced environment to the metal forming industry. XR technology, specifically the custom made tool that EPL is creating with Simpact, will increase turnaround times, knowledge transfer, and ultimately save cost while creating this immersive experience. Over. Now, while this technology is incredibly fascinating, we know you're all here to understand why this development matters to you, specifically as metal forms. As such, we're breaking this webinar down into three parts, or three categories, so to speak, for which the technology will affect your business or company you work for. First is the Industrial Internet of Things, or IIoT, and operations. Second, Corporate Social Responsibility, or CSR. And third, and not the last, profitability. Just to clarify, we'll be referring to IOT a lot throughout this presentation, as well as industry and digital 4.0 topics. These terms get thrown around a lot within the media and industry as a whole, and that can get a little confusing. Due to this, we're gonna simplify things a little for this webinar and just use the term industry 4.0, as it encompasses all things pertaining to IoT and digitization. Over. So Internet of Things and Operations. I am sure some of you, if not most, are familiar with IoT or Industry 4.0, as Stefan mentioned a few moments ago. But those of you that are not familiar with Industry 4.0, its prime focus is bringing about efficiency and reliability to the plant floor. It can invo involve hardware such as robotics and sensors that enable M2M or machine-to-machine -machine communication or software such as XR that optimize production processes. As a whole, we are still in the infancy stage when it comes to the adoption and implementation of technology specific to Industry 4.0. You are not late to the game here. The advancements of this technology is fast moving, but we are still in the early stages. Over. Now, you may be asking, how will XR impact Industry 4.0 and operations for metaphors? Well, here we provide some key figures that showcase the accelerating usage of Industry 4.0 in manufacturing along with where industry can expect this trend to expand even further within the next five years alone. You will notice, for the data we have highlighted here, and I'm gonna pause after I'm done so everybody can look at this slide a little bit longer, the specific industries that will be focusing on Industry 4.0 within their operational practices. These include manufacturing, automotive, workforce training, education, and healthcare. Of course, for this webinar, we're naturally concentrating on manufacturing and automotive, but to be quite honest, workforce training and education sort of go hand in hand with both of those as well. Over. To add on to Stefan's review here, EPL can confirm this as we have worked specifically with clients from manufacturing, automotive, energy, and healthcare industries. For these industries, we provide XR technology that includes augmented reality that will display a product in any space and allow the user to visually review how the product fits, works, and is used. Configurators are used for many products. For example, automotive companies can showcase various design elements to customers in an AR environment or on the web. Interactive 3D is a virtual training application via AR that walks the user through assembly and disassembly procedures. This is provided to personnel, personal devices as quick reference for employees to fully understand a specific engineering process. Fully immersive virtual reality will replicate a physical environment in a virtual space, allowing users to repeat the training scenarios and learn to react to unexpected events within a virtual space. 
Users are taught through a teach, learn, and assess, assess method. Each phase is enabled to measure specific manufacturing interactions while capturing the performance assessment and accuracy of the training in real time through intuitive data analytics. Over. So to conclude, when considering the factor of XR disrupting metal farming practices through means of industry 4.0 in operations, it is important to address a statement we made during part two of our EV webinar series that still applies very heavily today. As we said before, and are gonna repeat again, the industry as a whole is having a difficult time acquiring capital equipment talent, particularly, particularly with the younger generations that account for approximately 48% of the current U, um, US workforce. Just an example of two of these generations that we're talking about are millennials and Generation Z. As such, businesses must adapt an unconventional, and yep, that's a phrase for us older generational folks, or better said, new generational thinking when looking at future sales and marketing approaches or when adapting to tech advancements like XR and forward thinking changes to attract the workforce of the future. Incorporating XR technology into standard business operational practices will motiv motivate both demographics. With that said, we'll uh, dive deeper into this topic within our upcoming slides that explain how CSR or corporate social responsibility will be impacted by XR technology. Over. Now, Kim is gonna be able to discuss more of the technological aspects of how XR will effectively change metal former CSR practices, especially in regards to sustainability practices. But before I hand over the virtual mic, so to speak, I wanted to briefly touch upon how XR is changing Simpac's corporate social responsibility practice practices as a press manufacturer, specifically in relation to the uh, lessons we've learned during this pandemic. So as to provide an industry example that may make this more of a case study experience for you to use for your own XR considerations. Over. So our collaboration with EPL is set to be completed in three project phases, with each planned phase disrupting crucial business practices as we've already mentioned. However, the kickoff project, which is of relevance to the change in uh, CSR practices, is an augmented reality or AR sales and marketing software tool that will showcase Simpac's CX200 press from our recently launched CX series. The CX series and its industry 4.0 technology was designed specifically to accelerate small part production of stamped parts for the EV, appliance, automotive, and other general industries. This is a very important and key part of Simpac's short-term plans. And by short-term, I mean one to three years. As we are currently building 10 of these CX lines, they're being delivered into the North American market over the next six to 12 months. The MC2 series, which we're not touching on too much in this webinar, but is also uh, one size larger than the CX series, will have an additional 15 of these lines delivered into the North American market during the same time frame and are part of the second phase of Simpac's industry 4.0 plans. Just to put this into context, in general, a CX press line usually contains approximately 10 presses with the five presses per line for an MC2 series. Now, the key takeaway is that phase one of our collaboration uses, utilizes AR technology for which Kim will explain this extension of XR in more detail. This is something that we could very easily place all the bells and whistles on with this collaboration, but we didn't. We could have, like some of our competitive friends out there, created this amazing ocular device, such as XR glasses or headset mounted displays that provide smart factory integration to make a huge marketing splash. So why didn't we do that? Well, to be quite honest, the answer is twofold. First, while it is super cool, to show a highly engineered technology like this, and I'll be the first to give credit where credit is due here. It is totally unnecessary for a metal forming market, at least at this time, not to mention impractical. I mean, post pandemic safety regulations may or may not have been fully considered with that competitive, highly engineered uh, technology. And that is something that Simpac is working with EPL on to avoid. 
Customer safety and health always come first. I mean, a pair of XR glasses or a headset device is definitely a nice to have item. I mean, for instance, just think of the movie Ready Player One, but not a must have for the market. It definitely shows technological relevance for press manufacturers and the latest and greatest of product features, but most stampers will find little or no value with this. The industry is simply not ready for the cost versus benefits of this highly engineered technology, at least not yet. It's a nice to have the latest and greatest engineered product, but in our business, we need to be thinking of practicality and user friendliness of the product, as well as the price tag that goes with it. Also, we find it very concerning that wearables are currently being promoted in the industry, given the circumstances of COVID-19 and the potentiality of cross-contamination. I mean, what about the future? Don't think for one second that COVID is or was a once in a year, a uh, hundred year event, because that certainly is not true. Yes, cleaning measures can be taken uh, to an extent, but unless a stamping company can afford multiple wearable devices, for which those prices add up pretty quickly, it seems a little irresponsible to not consider a less flashy version of XR, so to speak, to start off with for the sake of health, safety, and overall cost effectiveness. So, now that I've drilled on for long enough, let's talk about our first project. Kim will now explain the tool in detail and how this tool impa will impact metal forming CSR practices. Over. Thank you, Stefan. Stefan is absolutely correct. The safety measures for phase one of our collaboration was of the utmost priority for the market. Well, keeping in mind that what we do today can apply to various XR applications in the future, not just AR. Currently, EPL is handling the design, development, testing, and deployment of the AR application. That will allow Simpact to not only promote the new press series in a highly innovative way, but also enable Simpact to highlight key features of the press and its capabilities. The technology will provide a three-dimensional view that you can see here on the slide for which SIMPAC clients can use remotely to walk around, through, and inside the tool during use. The solution makes it possible to view the internal components of the press and virtually check and validate measurement requirements of press setup and supporting press buy-off procedures. In addition, it enables the customer, riggers, and automation suppliers to also verify the tool footprint and floor space requirements within the plant prior to the delivery. While all of these features are incredible, the safety concerns addressed here, as Stefan mentioned, was COVID-19. We discussed wearables during the initial stages of our collaboration, but we mutually decided against it. Instead, this AR tool is available as a downloadable app for customers to use on their personal phones and tablets. The experience can be completely remote and personalized. There is no safer option for the industry at this time, and that was the priority. Start with safety in mind, and then expand as we further enter the new normal. Additionally, XR creates various eco-friendly benefits. One huge benefit being the ability to decrease your company's carbon footprint, particularly in regards to training and reskilling the workforce, for which we discuss further in the upcoming slides. For greater insight, a training manual on average consists of anywhere from 50 to 250 sheets of paper. Think about it. XR eliminates the entire manual or manuals as companies will print multiple for training purposes. The sustainability impact is astounding when you compare it to the facts. For one example, 250 sheets of papers is about a half a ream for just one large manual. Consider multiple copies, maybe 40. Uh, that would amount to roughly 20 reams of paper. That's one box. 
It takes an estimated 24 trees to produce 400 reams of paper, according to a study from the University of Southern Indiana. The devastation is avoided with the use of XR, if applied properly. Over. Metal forming, corporate and social responsibility, practices and knowledge transfer. In addition to the XR collaboration we have in place with SIMPAC, we will expand with second and third project phases that will tackle reskilling the workforce and reshaping service support as we know it today. As Industry 4.0 and smart factories are becoming a pressing priority, new skilled workers are needed. XR provides that generational training that may be implemented for complete digital fluency. In just a second, Jamie is going to show the video we made to showcase this training. Please keep in mind, while the video is playing, GoToMeeting automatically sends a reminding, reminder to turn up your volume, even though we will not be speaking. There's nothing wrong with your sound and if, it, if you get the notification. Thank you, Jamie. I know that what we just showed was motorcycle, uh, but what it does is highlights the interactive 3D abilities that can also be shown in augmented reality. So the second and third phases of the SIMPAC and EPL collaboration will provide remote technician maintenance and technical service and operator instructions. That was the focus of what we've just shown you there. International communication will be made possible and technicians will be able to easily assess extensive three-dimensional instructions and support. Training can vary maintaining the press itself, running the machine, monitoring the press and die, and learning how to achieve optimal strokes per minute for desired throughput and real-time troubleshooting. These are just examples as the training can be more involved than what we are highlighting here. Another important factor is to note that XR enables the no one gets left behind motto, as the training achieved through XR is designed to be user-friendly for all skill levels and generations. Companies will appeal to the younger and eager entering the workforce and hoping to dive headfirst into Industry 4.0. However, it will also ensure that the older generations employed do not feel overwhelmed by the new technology and industry changes. There's a role for everyone here, and XR embraces the ideal. With XR applications, businesses can track, measure, and report on results. You get access to the real-time intelligent data to help you view employees and customer engagements, assess employee performance and retention, improve engineering and manufacturing processes and more. The application analytics are enabled to track users, usage, time spent, tasks completed, number of times accessed, motor and non-motor movement, hand tracking, eye tracking, duration, completion, and information and how it is accessed by people. Any other inf number of desired results can be captured and reported to the authorized administrators and users within EPL's custom engineering. Whatever the application, you'll have the data you need 
to make your business run smarter. Over. So, what are the most drastic changes XR will create for metal forming? Obviously, profitability. Saying that companies can mitigate future costs into more robust profits is definitely a huge statement to say for certain, especially given the circumstances surrounding how COVID-19 was created. With XR technology though, as we'll show within these next few slides, it is not only possible, it's actually a fact. Over. Now, from firsthand experience, we can, um, I can share that Simpac went through a ton of challenges during the pandemic as we had to completely rethink how we were to handle our sales, marketing, and service practices, especially throughout multiple buy-offs we had uh, throughout COVID-19. First, we quickly realized the new industry challenges the pandemic posed. For instance, the need for low human interaction, having to work remotely, and so on and so forth. There had to be a better way, a more inter interconnected way that we could still appeal to our customers in a timely, low-cost fashion. After Jamie, Simpac's inside sales and marketing manager, talked with EPL, we realized XR was that better way. It was the solution the industry needed, and Simpac had to prepare for this new reality. We had to find a way to prevent post-COVID-19 disruptions, increase productivity, and prepare the workforce for industry 4.0. Over. The simple fact is that XR will help mitigate supply chain disruptions and economic uncertainties by redefining business models for the next gen era that will be imperative to reshaping our economic future. Real-time meetings can be held through this technology without ever needing to travel, which not only saves costs, but also improves upon safety throughout the pandemics as well. However, there is much more to XR enabling metal formers to reach profitability post COVID-19. A majority of that, this involves to cost savings through the immersive and interconnected experiences of the increase that provides the productivity, efficiency, and quality. It helps metal formers meet on-time demands and provides complete transparency for the entire company and capital equipment suppliers involved over another way this technology will increase profitability can directly be tied into its ability to save costs through completely remote uh, buy-off processes especially when dealing with an international press manufacturer like simpac for instance with xr the virtual press can be blown apart in an exploded view so that in uh, individualized parts and components can be seen and manipulated in a lifelike manner at scale effectively changing aftermarket services as well. No travel costs needed, or at least a considerably less amount of travel costs. Clear and more concise communication, uh, communications are made possible as you can examine the customized specifications for your specific press uh, ordered remotely. In regards to services, if a part is needed, but the person looking at the part isn't sure what it is or what the part number might be, not a problem. The specific part is easily identifiable so as to eliminate any miscommunication that may lead to shipping incorrect parts or other costly mishaps that press manufacturers and customers sometimes tend to face. Over. It is important to note specifically for plant managers, engineers, and other key players within the metal forming industry that this feature provides a seamless solution for part ordering, part identification, tool identification that is required for either maintenance activities or part replacement. Over. To branch off this vital point that Kim has made, Simpic has made it very clear through its discussion of six ways capital equipment suppliers can support metal formers with Metal Forming Magazine, that upholds our brand renowned promise of providing on-time accessibility of critical spare parts and support is a key area of focus for Simpac now and moving forward into the future. We explained how as technology evolves, it is imperative that press manufacturers continue to hold spare parts inventories locally, as well as improve the serviceability 
of the equipment they provide. At Simpac, we know we have to continue to be better in this area. And that is also one of the reasons why, moving forward, we are embracing this technology. This technology enables a faster turnaround for identification, inventory management, and alternative solutions for parts orders. In addition, XR's benefit of real-time interconnectivity provides immediate accessibility that metal formers can and should expect from all capital equipment suppliers. I mean, think for instance of a person on third shift sees a broken part but doesn't know what it is. That person can take a tablet, blow up the press, so to speak, not physically, virtually, mind you, to see the picture of the part and compare it to what they uh, are seeing to make sure that they're, uh, what they're selecting is correct. They can then touch the picture of the part and either see if the specific part is in the spare parts tool crib or generate a purchase request to the purchasing department. So when the first shift arrives, they can review, request a quote, and order it right away. No more waiting for the next day um, for the next day or calling in an off-site person to review. This now can all be done virtually. Over. Next, I want to talk a little bit about market pen penetration. Now that we've covered the three ways extended reality will drastically reconstruct metal forming practices, <laughs> the fun part begins. Kim will show a brief clip of what our kickoff project entails. However, and here's a little bit of marketing. The full demo of this technology will not be unveiled until Fabtech Chicago this September, for which we will have a live demo at our booth in Hall D, booth D46931. And we will present the technology during Fabtech's call for speakers symposium. We will also be discussing the development more so in PMA's Internet of Things for Manufacturers this fall. Over. In just a second here, Jamie's going to start this uh, video also, and you'll get a real feel for how big this tool really is. Jamie, if you could. Thanks, Jamie. So as you can see there, the tool is, is uh, quite large. Um, and some of the things to think about here is how can you evaluate the tool and the floor space um, that the, this tool may take up prior to the delivery? You can use this to place it on the, uh, place it on the floor, figure out where your high-low uh, traffic is going to be, foot traffic is going to be, and the room that you have around it. You can review the disassembly and reassembly procedures and how the how the equipment goes together. You can use it for the tool buy-off to measure the bed. Technicians are going to be able to use this technology for service, maintenance, and operator instructions. In later phases, we will start addressing spare part ordering, as Stephen Stephen mentioned just a minute ago. Over. This XR tool and its software IP that EPL is configuring for our press systems will help us continue to set a benchmark for how press manufacturers should cater to OEMs, automotive tiers, home appliance manufacturers, and other general stamping plants. EPL is helping us to better the industry as a whole as we dive deeper into this new digital era. We are beyond excited to see how XR creates the changes indicated within this case study. After you've listened to Kim and I um, this whole time, you may be wondering, well, when can we expect this technology to fully penetrate the market? While we cannot speak for other press manufacturers and or capital equipment suppliers, the XR tool that Simpac and EPL are currently creating will become available at large with our latest order 
from one of the largest tier one suppliers in North America. SIMPAC will be distributing a full press release in regards to this within the upcoming weeks for which additional information will be provided. But we wanted to take this time to indicate that the XR influence will be made pre uh, obvious sooner than the industry may have previously thought. Over. So in conclusion, that concludes our presentation. And before we go to the question and answer phase, I'd like to personally give a thank you to the, some of the following people. First and foremost, I wanna personally thank my inside sales and marketing manager, Jamie Bartholomew, who actually spent over a year researching this technology before bringing this to myself and the rest of the SIMPAC team. And so even though we are announcing all of this today, Jamie was actually working on this back in late 2019. You've probably heard me this, say this before and you're gonna hear me say it again and again, but people my age are actually starting to be considered this past, so to speak. People Jamie's age and caliber are considered the future of our industry. I might be the boss, so to speak, but as people like Jamie, who make me look better, what makes Simpax such a strong team and what the future of metal forming is all about. And yes, she's sitting right next to me and I think a tear, she's shedding a tear now as well. Next, I also want to personally thank both Brad and Marlene at Metal Forming Magazine for having us present this impactful case study. And the entire SIMPAC team would also like to thank Kim and our friends at EPL for joining us today and helping SIMPAC to ma maintain its reputation as an innovative global leader metal forming technology. Over and out. Excellent, Stefan and Kim. Thanks so much for the presentation. Uh, we do have plenty of time for, for questions uh, from the audience. Go ahead and uh, Use that question panel on the on the go to screen on the right hand side if you want to type a question uh, to our speakers. Um, guys, we do have a couple of questions already. So one is, um, and I think I asked you this some time ago, is is XR an industry accepted term? Where where did you? Uh, I don't know if that's a Kim or a Stefan question, but where did this XR term come from? I think Kim, you can uh, you should feel. Can you feel that one, please? Yes. Um. You know, it. Uh, I, I'm not even sure who adopted it or who tagged the term as XR, but it was becoming to be this whole conversation around, well, we do VR, we do AR. Well, a lot of the tools that you build are, they can be reused in either one of those applications. So XR, uh, XR Extended Reality was uh, born, uh, a few years ago, and it seems like it's been adopted quite well throughout. Okay, good, thank you. Um, so the follow-up question is, can these XR solutions be uh, used for uh, to test controls code? You have, you, you need to write additional um, code that bridges between that um depending on what the application is going to be you know do you want to do you want to test something and be able to see how the machine is operating maybe you want to be in a mixed reality environment and see the controls and actually run through the testing you can set up those triggers to to do those events okay good good uh, okay, so you, you guys showed the XR technology on, on a new press. Uh, can the technology be utilized on existing press systems, older systems? Okay, so well, I'm just, I'm gonna, Kim, I'm going to start off with that one, and I'm going to I'm going to then feel, let let you uh, go into the technical side of that. Perfect. Um, for everything is feasible and everything's possible. So for existing and older generation presses, of course you can do that. The problem is, or I wouldn't say problem, the challenge is, is you have to create 3D drawings or CAD drawings of all of the different parts and components in those press systems themselves. So if you're talking about an older generational press, the press itself would have certain challenges because you'd have the costs associated with that to create those. When you're talking about newer systems, Obviously, um, in this day and age, we create everything via 3D CAD, so that it makes things a lot easier and more simplistic to uh, to use. Now, 
Kim, you want to continue on for me there? Yeah, I think one of the uh, one of the benefits as as we look at this and how the how everything's evolving, you have newer presses and you have older presses, and you have these older presses in your plant, and you may have a more senior um, workforce that has a certain technique to how they maintain that press. They might kick it twice, hit it with a mallet, and then uh, put the safety blocks in, and they continue to do their work. Well, if we don't capture that information, the younger generation, when they step up to do the test, they're not gonna have that information available where they need it at the tool and on the floor. So I think in some cases, the, probably the the best applicable situation there would be to capture the needed information. What parts wear out more often than others and maybe just go ahead and scan that information, kind of reverse engineer it, create the 3D models and incorporate it into the XR technology and then provide that as a record so that you have that as you move forward in time. Next. Sounds good. Good, good. Thank you. Um, so you both mentioned um, that AR and MR will pretty much become ubiquitous in, in the next four years. Uh, would you compare this to the accessibility of cell phones and when you keep in mind affordability and adoptability? Yeah, I think that uh, as fast as, well, the market right now is on a trend to in uh, in scale to be larger than computers and cell phones altogether between XR hardware and software over the coming years. So when you think about that, the technology is evolving so quickly. I mean, last year you could get a head mounted display and you, you had a difficulty finding equipment that had hand tracking available. Mm -hmm. Now you, you, you it's becoming just something that is part of the program where in a few more years, the glasses that you go to get at the uh, at the eye store, they have an option for you to buy it with AR on it. So I, I think that this is gonna become an everyday type of occurrence in the coming years. And I don't really think it's too far away. I mean, Brad, if you take a look at it, remember uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was about three to five years ago, you had Google Glass. And that was that first Fourier that uh, Google had with the, you know, where yep. you had the, the, the glasses with the little uh, uh, with little monitor stuff on the side. Yep, yep. Um, you're gonna, and of course that was insanely expensive for anybody to get. I'm thinking that probably within the next five to 10 years, you're gonna see that as uh, pretty much commonplace. Um, not only for that, but those things are then gonna interact with a lot of the stuff that what Elm Park Labs has already, uh, already provided. I think that uh, when you look at what uh, Kim and uh, her team are doing, they're pretty much on the forefront of that technology. I mean, that's part of the reason why Jamie looked, uh, you know, was so excited about it and why uh, we at Simpac are embracing this because we realize whether we want to or not, this is the future of not only our industry, but every other industry. So you either are going to get on board or you're going to fall to the wayside. All right. Yep. Interesting times to be sure. So uh, following that, so you mentioned AR provides the greatest value in the short term to, to metal formers and other manufacturers. How do you, what do you see as the best long-term long -term solution? I, that it, I believe AR is still always going to be one of, the, um, one of the mainstays. But each one of the tools provides a different benefit within an organization. Uh, if you think about uh, workforce training, uh, virtual reality will probably give us a very good simulated environment to provide that training, simulate different events and occurrences that maybe are rare to a training environment. So VR would be that, that would be kind of replacing a classroom training. You could do that from your home. You could be in a multiplayer mode, just like uh, just like gamers do today. I could be across the country or across the world in a classroom, in VR, sharing an experience and learning how to do something together. AR 
is always going to be able to uh, provide exactly what we showed in the vehicles there and, and in the uh, in the tool, it, walking through it and experiencing um, everything. The MR, mixed reality, is going to also kind of come to the forefront. Mixed reality is a different application of AR, augmented reality where it takes and puts that information on glasses that you're wearing that you can actually see through it. You'll see the real environment along with information. And you can also tie in some remote assistance with that. So they all have their role. Uh, the idea is to build things with that in mind so that you don't have to recreate it, recreate it, and recreate it. Build it once, get some reuse out of it, and um, change what you need to when you need to. Excellent. We do have a few more minutes left if anybody else has questions. We've got one more question uh, already in the queue, but if anybody else has questions, go ahead and fire away. Um, is the XR tool specific to any type of uh, specific type of press, mechanical, servo, et cetera, or does the press type really not impact uh, the technology? It's pretty much irrelevant which uh, press technology you're going to use. I mean, um, you know, you can uh, you, you can do it from uh, the simplest of, um, of uh, pieces of equipment to the most complex pieces of equipment. As you saw in the uh, the very very short teaser video that uh, Kim and her team at Elm Park Labs have put together, uh, we basically are taking one of the simpler forms of the presses that we have for the CX model. But um, when we're talking about what we're planning on doing with the, uh, the new presses, we're talking about even larger presses, not just maybe 100 or 200 tons um, as a gap frame press, but we're looking at uh, either eccentric drive or link drive presses up to 3,000 tons with 300 inch beds. Uh, we're also talking about 25 to 2,800 ton servo presses with 300 inch beds. So, it it doesn't it doesn't matter what you're looking at. We can make it. It can be something as simple or as complex as you want it to be. Right. Yep. Makes sense. Okay. If we don't have any further questions, then uh, I think we can wrap things up. So of course I want to thank Stefan and, and Kim for really an outstanding and insightful presentation and kind of look at the the future and I guess the future is here. I uh, also want to thank our audience for attending today's program. Uh, we hope everyone found it to be a valuable learning experience. Once again, uh, an archive of this event will soon be available on our website. We'll shoot everybody an email uh, when that when that is available for you to view online. You can watch it again, share it with others. Um, so thanks again for attending. Thanks again to Stefan and Kim and the whole team at Simpac and Elm Park. Uh, you may now close your browsers, and everybody have a great afternoon.